Hey guys, it's CS Joseph with csjoseph.life doing another lecture on comparing types as per some of our subscriber requests. Uh, keep those requests coming guys. I will be doing more videos based on requests, but I want to knock out a few of them before we do a deep dive in our next uh, main series. So here we go. I've got the whiteboard tonight and the two types we're going to be doing tonight, the ISFP versus the INFP. The most moral of all the types are these two types. So uh, a lot of people get confused uh, between ISFPs and INFPs on a regular basis. This is actually probably my most requested comparison video uh, currently. Between the requests I've been getting on Twitter, uh, Discord, and on YouTube, this is the most uh, wanted or most desired uh, uh, comparison video. So that's perfectly fine by me. Let's do it. Uh, what makes it so difficult to identify these guys? Well, they're behind the scenes. Uh, that means they're informative, responding, control. They're informative uh, because, uh, I mean, the alternative is to be direct, and they don't really like being direct because uh, by being direct, they're at risk of uh, causing someone to think poorly of them because, oh, I could be seen as mean, or I could be seen as abusive, or, or conflict, right? The reason is, is because they're both insecure with their TE inferior. They're insecure of making people think bad of them. They don't want people to think bad of them. They want people to think highly of them. They, that's, that's what their desire is. That, that is their hope. They want to have the experience of people thinking highly of them because that allows them to, be, to increase their brand or their status symbol because ISFPs and INFPs are both very about status because they draw their self-worth with their FI hero based on the status that other people have. Of course, some of them disagree with me, but the truth of the matter is, is that when people are thinking highly of the ISFP and the INFP, then they feel good about themselves. And that's how they are able to engage with life. And it also makes them, causes them to make decisions, but also that could cause people to manipulate them in that way. You know, someone comes along and be like, oh, I think really highly of you and all these things. And then all of a sudden they start feeling good about themselves when it's not even remotely true at all. And that person is just lying to them to get something out of them. Although, even though the ISFP is pretty weak to that, INFP not so much because expert intuition parent is like, yeah, whatever. Someone's already done this to me before. Good luck. You know what I mean? And the INFP will be able to protect themselves from that. But the ISFP not so much they need someone else to protect them from that in that situation. So, being informative means you talk in terms of subtext and context. Everything is contextual. Everything being said by both of these types uh, always has additional hidden meaning behind it. It's not really just directly what it is. It's because from an ego standpoint, they're trying their best to be informative and they like to be informed and they like to inform others. Uh, and uh, even though they like to create the plan, uh, they prefer someone else to implement it for them. That's why they typically are ending up with uh, FJs of some kind, um, ISFJs, ESFJs uh, for the ISFP, or INFJs or ENFJs for the INFP, uh, which ENFJs don't really like making the plan, but they like being handed a plan and then they'll just do it, right? Same with INFJs, etc. And then that's the plan, you know, and uh, it's kind of interesting how hypocritical NFJs can be when it comes to planning because, and same with SFJs, because both types don't want to create the plan, but they need a plan handed to them so they can execute it for their day because they're J types, right? Although some J types like being the source of planning and the executioning of planning, like ESTJs, for example, or ENTJs. So it, it, it is kind of interesting how the types are different in that way and they can kind of interface with each other in different ways. Uh, so that's, that's informative. Um, they're both responding because they're both introverted. When they're around other people, like uh, when they're if they're around together, because remember, introversion is one person or two people together because it takes two to tango. But extroversion is three's a crowd. So when you have three or more people, extroversion is in, in place. And then when a person is in a responding interaction style, they start losing energy, mental energy, and they become drained. And then as soon as that mental energy is completely gone, they have to withdraw. And they withdraw and they're able to gain energy and solitude again. And after they have solitude time, they're able to return back to the social situation and engage. Uh, this is oftentimes why these two behind the scenes types are alone because they're at peace with themselves, very Zen focused uh, within uh, their own environments, within their own areas uh, where they have solitude and they're able to gain energy from that position. So, uh, 
control. Um, these are control types. They go at their own pace. They take their time. Uh, they are grandpa drivers on the freeway. Yes, they are really slow. Although <laughs> IFPs, these two types, don't think they're slow, but they really are, and they really annoy everybody else around them because they take forever on the road. And then they get mad at everyone else trying to go too fast. Oh, he's going too fast. He's going to crash. Except I don't, and I do drive fast. I'm sorry, but... Maybe you folks should kind of like trust the people that are actually good drivers instead of just silently judging everybody on the road for being bad drivers because that's not actually the case. And I mean, and I get that you feel good about that judgment because majority speaking people are bad and then you're okay judging everyone because the majority of people are that way. But there's people like me who actually do drive fast and are actually really good and I've not gotten in an accident as a result of driving fast. So, and I've been doing that for like a long time. So I don't think there's a problem with that. You know what I mean? So try not to be so silently judgy with your FI hero and TE inferior all the time, both you types, like artists and dreamers, because you're not always correct about that. I mean, yeah, you feel it's true, but that doesn't make it's true. Like, seriously, it doesn't mean it's true. Just because you feel it's true doesn't mean it's true, guys. Try to understand that, you know, that's just how the world works. But the data says otherwise. I don't care if the data says otherwise. Correlation is not causation, TE inferior, and that's something you two types should try to learn. Uh, but again, that's why your guys are paired up with TI child or TI inferior, because those four types definitely know that correlation is not causation, and they care about the actual absolute truth way more than like the general feely, well, I feel that this might be true, or, or that's your truth. You know, that's not how that, no, 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 that's not going to fly around those types. That's why you're paired up with those because those types keep you honest or at least keep you moral. Whereas you're able to kind of keep them honest because you can provide them with the reference points with your TE inferior and help them organize their thoughts properly, which allows a more structured procedural routine approach for both the types. Your guys' TE inferior do that and it's fantastic when you do. So, uh, informative responding uh, control, that's your interaction style, they're behind the scenes. The fact that both these types are behind the scenes is what makes it difficult for people who are FI hero to kind of figure out, okay, well, which of these two am I? Because it's the same interaction style. It's just a different temperament, right? One's more idealistic and focused on people. Uh, one's more artistic, focused on the uh, physical environment and manipulated the physical environment to its own will. That's basically the stark difference between the, these two types. So we uh, talk about, let's talk about FI hero. It's all about morals. Uh, these two types are the most moral of all the types. They both have FI hero. And they make decisions based on what they believe is a good or bad thing. They don't really care about the true false. They care about good, bad, and good, bad from the point of view that uh, people, uh, well, they draw their self-worth from the fact that other people think highly of them or, or think less of them. And then that kind of makes their, you know, they can have a really big high day or a big low day because they're concerned about their reputation or they're concerned about uh, their status amongst people that are close to them or people in general. Uh, and that's another reason why they're informative and why they're behind the scenes is because that social interaction puts them at risk of feeling bad about themselves because they so de they, they desire very much that people think highly of them. And that's what FI Hero is all about. In order for them to behave absolutely moral, they need other people to think well of them with their TE inferior. So the ISFP has SE uh, parent. This gives them mastery over physics. That's why they're very good at mechanics. They could fix a car. Uh, they could basically fix anything, similar to how ISTPs. The difference between an ISTP and an ISFP, though, is that the ISFP actually has to feel good about it, has to be in the mood, because these two types are very moody, and if they're not in the mood, they ain't gonna do anything, and it's really annoying. So you have to constantly try to you know care for them and make them feel good so they're in the mood to do things and be productive because if they're not in the mood they're not going to be productive and instead you know it's like it's like having a it's like having an INFP you know mother who uh you know has has a child and uh you know isn't working or anything but then you know when when dad comes home from work she just goes to bed because she's too tired of you know doing nothing all day long other than just taking care of a kid right well that is because she's just not in the mood, right? It, she's just not in the mood, you know? She's not in the mood to make dinner. Or, or an INFP guy who uh, is just not in the mood to get out of his mother's basement or not in the mood to uh, get a job, you know? Or 
same thing with ISFPs. You know, I'm not in the mood to participate in this system, you know, and it, their moods can really get in the way and their moods can inhibit their progress as human beings, especially immature INFPs and immature ISFPs. Mood is everything. And they walk around thinking that their mood is the most important thing. And other people are bad people or stupid people if they're not making room for their moods or how they feel. But I'm a highly sensitive person. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't care. You're a human being like everybody else. You know, I get that you're sensitive. I'm sensitive too. Everyone is sensitive in some way, shape, or form. But the difference is, is that I don't allow my mood to get in the way of being productive. I, you know, there are days where I could be insanely, insanely depressed, but I'm still being productive. But it's really sad. Yeah, well, maybe you should be productive as a result of the sad. Use the sadness as motivation for you to actually try to bring about change in your life instead of using your mood as a crutch to not be motivated to do anything. That's one big problem I have with FI Heroes. I wish FI Heroes would figure that out. It's not fair to the rest of the types to have this mood excuse. And FI Heroes, and even in some cases, FI Parents do it. Although, FI Parents are kind of funny. They kind of accuse everyone else of being really poorly irresponsible with their mood. Anyway, what, what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that what I'm saying is that INFPs and ISFPs have this thing where their mood can get out of control. And they make it, uh, they can use it as a crutch. And then they can decide to be idle all of a sudden because their mood is not right. You know, I'm sorry, but the world does not revolve around FI heroes and young ones really kind of believe that it can or should or it would want to. And then come as they get older, they realize, oh, crap, that doesn't really happen. You know, and then they have a reality check. Uh, INFPs especially need that reality check. Because if, if, they, if they're raised, you know, without discipline, and if they're raised without, like, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child, if, not, if they're never spanked by their parents, they'll think that the world is made of sunshine and rainbows, and they'll continue on in that way through their adulthood, much to the detriment of people in their, in their lives. And you got to be really, really careful. So if you're raising an INFP, make sure you discipline them, because if you don't, it will be a problem for them and your grandchildren uh, down the road. So ISFPs... They don't really have that problem so much because they can see what other people are doing uh, and they know what they want to do and they can kind of let their mood not really cause them to be idle so much and they can actually become super, super diligent. The virtue and vice of the artist type is uh, uh, diligence versus, you know, uh, sloth. They can be very slothful, yes, because they're not in the mood or whatever, but the ISFB can be insanely diligent and absolutely accomplish like a crap ton. You know, and then once the INFP finally has developed uh, self-discipline with their SI child, they can also be insanely diligent. But still, the ISFP kind of beats them in the diligence area. It's because the ISFP wants to be productive, because the ISFP starts to draw their self-worth, their sense of self-worth to their FI hero as a result of being productive, right? So SD Parent is about manipulating the physical environment. I mean, an ISFP can look at a hillside, buy an excavator, and they could just see in their head without doing any planning or any paperwork or nothing how that hillside is going to be, and then they could just take that excavator without any very much training on how to use it, and then all of a sudden that hillside is exactly the way they want it to be. It's unbelievable. ISFPs are amazing artists. They can do insane paintings or songs or bands and... Uh, uh, and both types are very good at writing because TE Inferior, when it aspires, it can be so good at writing in some cases, especially INFP. Uh, writers like George R.R. R. Martin, INFP. Uh, who else? Uh, Robert Greene is an INFP. INFPs are brilliant writers, and I highly recommend you read literature from these people. If you haven't read George R.R. R. Martin, what are you thinking? If you haven't read Robert Greene with an E at the end, what are you thinking? He wrote The 48 Laws of Power. That stuff is dope. Uh, the 50th Law with 50 Cent and Robert Greene, dope. I, I, yes, I am a Robert Greene fanboy, and INFPs are amazing in that way. Uh, so just understand that ISFPs have expert sensing parent. INFPs have in expert intuition parents, so they're just aware of what other people want. They can kind of, they're, they're aware of the what if. Expert sensing for ISFPs is the what is. Uh, expert intuition for INFPs is the what if. And they're constantly asking what if, and they can kind of uh, anticipate the behavior of uh, fellow people. 
people around them. They can predict things. They can predict events. They can predict people. They can predict actions. They can predict, predict, predict. As long as the INFP has experienced it before with their SI child, they can predict that action later in the future with their extroverted parent. All it takes is that they have to have experience. And the more experience that the INFP has, the more they're able to prognosticate with their expert intuition prescience and see into the future and predict future events. This is especially true with trending and day training. INFPs are amazing financiers and they are amazing at day trading. I know an INFP who was at a university and he would trade on his phone while uh, lecturing students and he made a lot of money doing day trading to a point where he didn't have to be a professor anymore but he would just did it for the sake of teaching because he loved teaching because he has his ENFJ uh, shadow which is the mentor and he's trying to mentor students and he wants to share his knowledge of his philosophy because INFPs are all about their philosophy, their idealistic dreams and their philosophy in the same way an ISFP is all about their art. I meant INFP is about philosophy by the way. It's they're like so similar it's so hard to keep them straight you know what I mean? I think that's why people want me to make this video. Anyway, so SE parent, expert intuition parent, ISFP, INFP, respectively. Uh, so their child functions are different. The ISFP's NI child, it's all about what it wants. NI child is like that little kid running across a minefield because it wants to get to the other side and then somehow it makes it across safely and no mines go explode and then it comes back, uh, grabs the cup of sugar from grandma's house, then goes across the minefield again to get back home and nothing ever happens. It's like, wow, do you have like liquid luck or something? But yeah, I, I NI child and ISFPs getting out of close calls is like a normal thing for them. They can just get through anything. SI child, however, the INFP, well, they can outlast anything. They can endure anything. INFPs have this insane zen endurance and it's like, what the hell? How is it possible you could put up with so much suffering? Wow. Uh, it's like it's like they're they're levitating over this uh, lake and uh, people are throwing rocks at them and the rocks uh, even though they make contact doesn't even doesn't even uh, dispel their concentration. It's like nothing. They can weather any storm, any hurricane, any tempest you send towards the INFP. The INFP is like, "Meh. I don't care." You know, they, they, it's like it's like honey badger. Honey badger don't care. I mean, that's literally the INFP. They're they're like the the walking honey badgers, the walking honey badger honey badger meme mascot. You know, because SI child can just literally put up with anything, and they can handle it. Uh, they, you know, it. <laughs> it's like oh, there's that thing right there. Here. <laughs> It's just like, they're just gonna shrug it off. That's how INFPs are. They could definitely take a beating, you know, and then after they've charged up with all that beating, they can, they can really let them have it. You know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, it's kind of like the Iron Fist almost, even though the Iron Fist uh, is technically an INFJ uh, in the Marvel story, but uh, he takes more hits, the more he gets charged up, the more damage he can deal. That's kind of an INFP, let's be honest. So, uh, so SI child needs to be comfort needs to be comfortable at all times. It's all about being comfy. It's all about being safe. It's all about having experiences and receiving experiences. INFPs, especially in the bedroom, love to receive sensation from their lovers, whereas ISFPs love to give sensation to their lovers with their SE parent, uh, because NI child wants to give. So they they want to give experiences, give sensation. As SE wants to give sensation, NI SE. And then SI is uh, NECs that their part, the INFP's partner wants to give them a sensation. They want to receive a sensation because their partner is going, they see that the partner wants to give them a sensation and the SI child is ready to receive that amazing sensation in the bedroom. And that's kind of how they take it. Uh, so INFPs are more geared from taking and receiving in the bedroom, whereas ISFPs are more geared to giving sensation in the bedroom. That's one another huge difference between the two types, especially from their sexual response. Uh, and we, we kind of talked about extroverted thinking uh, inferior, which is a rationale. They're very insecure about how other people think of them. That's kind of why they're very behind the scenes. They don't really engage with people in that way because they don't want people to think of them as bad people. Uh, and because of that, they can also end up silently judging everyone with their FI hero. You're not good. You're a bad person. You're this. You're that. Um, but that's also because of uh, extroverted feeling uh, nemesis, which we'll get to a little bit. Although, hold on. Yeah, okay. So just making sure I was doing that right. So extroverted, so TE rationale. Uh, 
they're, they can be both very organized. INFPs are really good with financial situation. ISFPs can be good at finances and they can take charge uh, with their uh, ENTJ subconscious, especially when they get over their fear with their TE inferior. That ENTJ comes out with the ISFP and they can take charge. They can like run a band, they can run a business, they can run a team of people, they could be a foreman uh, uh, for a general contractor. Uh, and uh, and lead a team of people on a job site. ISFPs are amazing about that. They can even actually run a team in producing art uh, and 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 direct people who are doing the art project instead of just doing the project themselves, which is an, which is amazing. Uh, INFPs can do similar things, except from a financial standpoint or a professorial standpoint, or like they're they're really good headmasters at schools, principals. Uh, those types of uh, careers, INFPs are super good at that, uh, really good with finances if they apply themselves, good with day trading if they apply themselves and get trained up on it and get additional experience because the more experience they have with introverted sensing child, the more they can predict uh, trends within the market because INFPs can use their extroverted intuition parent to predict trends because it's prescience and it's very symboli symbol symbol Symbology is everything to expert intuition parent and predicting trends and pattern pattern recognition is everything there is with an INFP in the metaphysical realm. ISFPs, it's all about pattern recognition within the physical environment. That's why they're very mechanical, provided they're in the mood to do mechanics in that particular area because ISFPs like to specialize in that regard. INFPs like to specialize as well, but with their philosophy because INFPs are all about their core inner philosophy. Uh, you know, philosophy of life, whereas the ISFP is about their art. Everything's about their art. Although ISFPs are philosophical, but it's usually philosophical with their art and what they're, what they want to bring their symbols to life instead of maintain their symbols within, right? So, FE critic, uh, both types walk around believing everyone else is bad or worried that other people are bad. And uh, because of that, uh, they kind of assume that people are just bad people until proven otherwise, which kind of sucks because when they're trying to have relationships with other people, they kind of shy away from people because they're like, well, I'm a very good person, but that person's obviously a bad person and they're silently judging everybody um, in that regard. And it has nothing to do with what's true or false. And especially uh, ISFPs because they don't exactly have experience with other people and yet they're judging people to be bad people straight off away. It's only after they see that person and they're observing that person with their SE parent that FE critic or FE nemesis backs off and they realize, oh, that person is actually a good person. Um, FE nemesis from an INFP standpoint, the more experience that they receive from the person that they're judging, the more they realize that they're wrong and then they'll be like, okay, that person's actually a good person, but it takes time. Uh, INFPs have to be proven that a person is, uh, has to be proven over time that a person, and, and given a good impression that a person is not a bad person so that their FE nemesis is cool. ISFPs, they just have to observe it and then they're fine. Uh, now, their critic functions. ISFPs are very critical towards their own memory. They're also critical towards their own duty. They take duty very seriously. And even though ISFPs are very willpower based, they will at times decide to be very dutiful, especially to their partner, especially with their children and their family. And they can do things and create art or uh, mechanical things around the house specifically from a duty standpoint. They'll also claim that they have the best memory in the world. I have the memory of an elephant, said an ISFP once, but in reality, that's not technically true. Uh, ISFPs, uh, new information hits their head and pushes out the old stuff, but SI critic holds on to the most important, most critical things and will have that stored in their long-term memory. Thank God, but they can still be insanely forgetful, so you have to constantly remind ISFPs. That's why ISFPs go really good with SF. J types, ESFJs, ISFJs, because those types remember everything. And the ISFP can always ask them, you know, hey, what do you think with their TE inferior? And uh, do you remember this? Or ask them if they remember something because they're extroverted sensing is trying to look for memories stored in other human beings to see what that, it, you know, what they remember. INFPs don't have that problem because they have SI child and they just remember everything and they'll bring things up from like 30 years ago and you're like, what the hell? How is that still relevant to right now? But you said this thing 30 years ago. It's like, yeah, that's not now, though. I, I, have you realized that I've changed? Oh, you have. Awesome. You know, it, that leads to the most interesting conversations, you know, if I've ever heard interesting conversations. So INFPs have introverted intuition critic. 
So they're very critical towards their willpower. And because they're very critical towards their willpower, they don't allow themselves to want things. Whereas the ISFP lets themselves want things all the time with their NI child, right? But INFB, uh, NI critic, just doesn't really let themselves want things. They can get stuck in ruts in their life, especially if they get too comfy with their SI child. So to get an INFP motivated, you make them as uncomfortable as possible. And then they're motivated to make change and make things happen. Uh, if you're in a relationship with an INFP and they're stagnant, make them uncomfortable and they'll hop to. They'll hate you and then eventually they'll realize that they like being productive or they like doing what they're doing and then they'll stop hating and then they'll actually appreciate that you went so far as to make them uncomfortable. Awesome. Uh, it just really also depends on how mature they are because the more mature they are, the less they'll hate you and they'll, and the, and it would cost less time of them being upset at you for, you know, making them uncomfortable because they're like, I don't deserve this when actually, you know, they kind of do because they're not doing anything at the moment, right? ISFPs don't necessarily have that problem because their NI child is constantly trying to want to do new things and produce new sensations. Uh, and, uh, it, and it keeps them motivated as long as they feel good about what they're doing. And the same thing with the INFP. As long as they feel good and as long as they're comfortable, uh, uh, you know, comfortable to the point where, like, their mood is not dominating them or their lever to level of comfort is not dominating them, but they, they like what they're doing and they're comfortable with their career or their lane in life, then they can be productive in that way, but they're still at risk of reverting back to that stagnation. So to prevent that from happening, just make sure that you are prepared to make that SI child uncomfortable to keep them motivated to keep growing in life. Otherwise, they're at risk of like stopping growing and that sucks for INFPs when they stop growing because then their core inner philosophy is at risk of getting corrupted. And instead of actually being a, a visionary for social change in society, they end up uh, creating a philosophy that negatively impacts social change and they can be in, become a negative idealist basically that actually hurts people because they're so selfishly focused on maintaining their level of comfort and maintaining their level of mood what makes them feel good because INFPs similar to ENFPs can be focused on yeah I'm all for positive change but they don't they are at risk of not caring if it benefits other people they're totally fine if it just benefits them and that can also include financial situations. Not good. At least the ISFP doesn't really have that problem because they're committed to giving people a good experience, right? So, but then again, it's 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 more art. It's not really it's not really social change. You know, ISFPs don't really necessarily believe that they can have mass uh, macro level social change, but more micro level social change, and they're finally to do that with their art. Because as long as one person enjoys what they're doing, it makes it worth it to them. Whereas an INFP, multiple people have to enjoy their philosophy or enjoy what they're doing so that they can value themselves in that regard because they see that people want to buy into that philosophy, that core inner philosophy that they've developed. So uh, ISFPs have expert intuition trickster. So this is a huge difference between them and INFPs. ISFPs are weak to sales. Um, you have to protect them on used car lots from, uh, you have to protect them from ENFPs because those ENFPs will try to sell them on things that they don't want to buy and they can be taken advantage of because they're just completely unaware of how people, uh, they are completely unaware of what other people want. They are completely unaware that other people have intentions or agendas behind what they're doing. INFPs don't have that problem. They can see other people's agendas easily and call them out and they're protected from making those poor decisions. ISFPs not so much, so ISFPs have to be protected in that regard, and you have to watch out for them and, and safeguard them from poor intentions from other people. INFPs, however, have extroverted sensing uh, trickster, which makes them unaware of the physical environment. This is what causes them to drop things all the time or have horrible fashion sense, and they need SE inferiors and SE child types, uh, which are NJs, to teach the INFP proper fashion so that they can stop being really bad at fashion. Now, INFP women have a better handle on fa fashion than men, but it's still compared to like all women in general, it can actually be pretty bad. So they still need SE inferior and SE child types, NJ types to teach them proper fashion so they don't have that problem anymore. But again, once SI child has that introverted sensing experiential data inside of itself, and realizes what's worked in the past in terms of fashion, then INFPs have their style and then that and then that's their style and they're cool with their style indefinitely. 
ISFPs, they're like the guys who have tie-dye shirts all the time. You know, colors, uh, everything they wear is all about art because they're trying to convey the feelings that they have inside themselves and give a good experience because what they wear is their arts. They don't necessarily have that expert sense of weakness and that uh, INFPs do. But INFPs can compensate for it over time with more experience. And the bottom function, logic, uh, TI demon for both. Uh, so that basically is if uh, you're not uh, if you're not sharing your thoughts with them, if you're leading things up with interpretation, or if you're overly criticizing them, uh, they can become uh, you know especially the ISFP. The ISFP can like super go major ragey on that, and they'll literally start to plot uh, to harm you and harm your future. And uh, ISFPs will can be very plotty in this way and come up with these insane plans uh, to harm you and destroy your future, as well as destroy your relationships with other people. INFPs, the way they do it, uh, it's more of, it becomes a, it becomes a thing where they're looking for the nearest uh, tool to <laughs> you slug you with or take a hammer to your skull, that kind of thing, because it's like, I went out of my way, uh, I made you smarter, um, I warned you, I gave you warnings, you're not listening to my warnings, okay, well, why bother, you know? Uh, and it's like, okay, well, if you're not going to listen to me, uh, if you're not even gonna consider the data, then, you know, why bother? And then they could just, and then all of a sudden, because you are making bad decisions because you're not listening to that INFP guidance, all of a sudden, the INFP personally becomes harmed uh, because the INFP is trying to warn you, hey, there's this thing that's going to harm us. You better do something, make a decision. I don't have the power here to make this decision. Make the decision, please. We're going to get hit by a car. We're going to get by a car. And then all of a sudden, you ignore their warnings. And then you get hit by a car. And then they hate you. So then as you're both lying there upside down in this car, bleeding out and whatnot, the INFP is like, you know what? I'm just gonna finish the job and drive this uh, uh, protruded bulkhead thing from the car and right into your neck and no one would ever know. You know, like, that's how, that's how ISTP demon can happen. Because if you ignore them, uh, when they're trying to warn you about something and they're trying to help guide your thinking and if you're not interested in their guidance, they're just not going to have anything to do with you. And if, and if your ignorance causes them harm, that's even worse. Don't be ignorant. Always listen to INFPs. ISFPs is kind of similar. They're also trying to make sure that you have a good now. They're trying to give you the best now. But if you're not going to do things, if you're, if you're not going to be practical and you're not going to listen to their advice either, it's like, okay, well, why bother? And then they'll just start to plot to harm your future and not give you any advice at all and not uh, seek to make you comfortable at all anymore. Uh, they're just going to be focused on their comfort because it's like, well, why bother going out of my way to make you comfortable all the time if you're not even going to listen to me? So I'm just going to make myself comfortable then and uh, screw your future. I only care about mine because why, why do I even care so much, you know? Because both types, you know, they, they, they are pretty caring. You know, it comes from their... ESFJ shadow for ISFPs or their ENFJ shadow for uh, INFPs. You know, ISFPs, ESFJ shadow. Uh, is that it is at risk of being a doormat, but it's a supporter. It's trying to be supportive. And ISFPs, immaturely, because it's a shadow, are trying to be supportive. You know, and INFPs, immaturely, because it's a shadow, are trying to mentor people. That's how they're different. They mentor people. The INFPs are this grand professor that are all about increasing, uh, you know, the thinking and causing other people to be intelligent, especially by conveying the core inner philosophy. ISFPs are doing the same thing, except trying to convey it through their art, right? So I think that just about does it for the INFP and the ISFP. Gotta love that INFP dream world that they live in with their expert intuition parent and their FI hero. And gotta love... Uh, how uh, the ISFP takes their inner dream world and shares it with everybody else with their expert and sensing parent with the art that they create. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting kind of seeing like, you know, a philosopher versus an artist. You know, they, they kind of have a similar approach to things, but it just comes out of them differently uh, when it's shared with the external world. And it's absolutely fantastic. I, I really like both these types. They have a lot of strengths and weaknesses like other types, but I mean, that's what you get. Uh, no one's perfect. And and no one is complete either, which is a good thing because that allows us as human beings to have relationships with each other because when we combine our powers, you know, we become Captain Planet, right? And then we can like literally do what we need to do to change society, life, quality of life. Yeah, happiness, 
pursuit of happiness, everyone being happy because we completed the puzzle, because everyone's cognitive functions are coming together and then we're able to accomplish anything. Yeah, that'd be nice. But that's why we are the way we are. Human beings are built for a relationship and that's because our cognition is incomplete. But when we combine each other, our cognition becomes complete and we're able to literally accomplish anything. And INFPs and ISFPs are no, um, they, uh, they're definitely not left out from that process. They're, they are critical components in as much as any of the 16 types are critical components to be able to accomplish uh, anything. Anything that you know we collectively uh, put our minds to at a macro level and even at a micro level, even even at a family or a community or even as just like two people. Everyone's able to pro propagate this way with their cognition and kind of build and build and build or, you know, microcosms, macrocosms, it all works out in the end. So with all that, uh, if you have any questions about the INFP or the ISFP, please leave it in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Also, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have really good growth right now. Let's keep it going. Uh, also, if you want additional comparison videos, leave it in the comment section. I'll add it to the schedule. And also like the video. That would be dope. And if you haven't noticed, I have added a podcast uh, to the descriptions of all my videos. So if you don't want to be using up your phone data anymore uh, watching these videos, you can listen to the audio of these videos uh, on the podcast, which I recommend you do. I am available on iTunes, Google Play. I believe I'm on Spotify and I think player.fm. And there's one other that I'm on that I don't really quite remember. Oh, I think I'm on Stitcher as well. Yeah, I think it is Stitcher. So yeah, just find me, C.S. Joseph, and uh, get those podcasts uh, so you're not using up too much uh, mobile data on your phones if the YouTube videos are doing that. Uh, that way you can just kind of take me on the go wherever you are, maybe while you're commuting. Who knows? So with all that being said, I'll see you guys tonight.